Section E. Why do we recite the expedient means and the lifespan chapters? Shakyamuni's Lotus Sutra, when used for the purpose of realization is quite different in meaning from that based on faith and practice. Nikko Shonen, who was the second high priest, wrote in his 26 Articles of Warning, Article 10, My disciples should not study the doctrines of Tiantai sect unless they are well versed in the truthful teachings. Thus the study of the Lotus Sutra should be based on the Angi Kudan, the record of Nichiren Dai Shanan's oral teachings on the Lotus Sutra. From this standpoint, Tiantai's interpretation of the Lotus Sutra will help the study of Buddhism. Nichiren Dai Shonen praised the perfect interpretation of the Lotus Sutra made by Tiantai, and in the time of the, the latter day of the law, when Shakyamuni's Lotus Sutra itself loses its power of salvation, Tiantai's interpretation may be used in explaining the Lotus Sutra of the latter day of the law, or the Dai Gohanzen. However, it is incomplete for that purpose. In a word, realization in Buddhism is a means to comprehend the ultimate theory of Buddhism which is embodied in the Dai Gohanzen and to deepen one's faith in the Gohanzen. Tiantai intended only to make people understand the literal meaning of the Lotus Sutra. The study of Buddhism should be directed toward deepening one's faith in the Dai Gohanzen. Nichiren Shoshu believers should study the Gosho, the complete works of Nichiren Dai Shonen and not the Lotus Sutra or its interpretations. You may wonder why you must recite the Lotus Sutra in Gongyo if it is useless, but you can understand from the above explanation that you need not to recite the Lotus Sutra for realization but for practice. This is explained more clearly in the work of Nichi Khan Shonen, the 26th high priest who was known for his unparalleled knowledge of Buddhism. The following is a brief account of what Nichi Khan Shonen wrote in the Rock Khan Show, six volume writings. There are necessarily two ways of practicing Buddhism, primary and secondary. In this school of true Nichiren Shoshu believers, the secondary practice is the recitation of the expedient means, and lifespan chapters which adds to the profound blessing of chanting the Daimoku, Nam Nioho Renge Kyo, is the primary practice just as seasoning makes food taste better. Nichi Khan Shonen continues, this secondary practice is further divided into two, main and subordinate practices. We recite the lifespan chapter for the former and the expedient means chapter for the latter. This is because the lifespan chapter is more closely related to Nam Myoho Renge Kyo than is the expedient means chapter. As Miao Lo, the great teacher stated, the simultaneous practice of both primary and secondary practices produces immeasurable benefits. The relationship between primary and secondary practices are commonly seen in everyday life. In the drama of Midsummer Night's Dream, you will find actors and actresses performing their parts in earnest, while music and lighting assist to make their performance more impressive and more striking. In this case, the effect of the drama becomes more conspicuous with music and lighting. Likewise, the Gohanzen's blessings will increase even more through the secondary practice. Now, the question is what the expedient means and lifespan chapters represent. True Nichiren Shoshu believers has the lifespan chapter as its basic sutra but it also uses the expedient means chapter which is the most important part of Shakuman, provisional teachings, comprising the first half of the 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra. However, what the Dai Shonen derives from the expedient means chapter is much more profound than its literal meaning. The Dai Shonen calls it, Shaku Man, as I read it. In other words, it is the expedient means chapter as interpreted from the viewpoint of the Dai Shonen's Buddhism. The Dai Shonen read the chapter for two purposes, to repudiate and to borrow. Sentences are the verbal expression of what one has in mind. As such, they have the two aspects of expression and content. For instance, the words, let us promote world peace, spoken by a liberal have quite a different meaning from exactly the same words uttered by a communist. 
Likewise, the sentences of the expedient means chapter differ in meaning when they are interpreted literally and when they are understood from the viewpoint of the Dai Shonin's Buddhism. The Dai Shonin borrowed sentences from the chapter but repudiated its incomplete contents. To repudiate and to borrow are not two things but two sides of one thing like light and shadow. Here is an example. The expedient means chapter reads. Niji se sun ju san mai and jo ni ki go sheri hatsu sho bukchi a jin jin murio. Go chi a man nun ge nunio. The first sentence literally means, at this time, the Lord Buddha serenely arose from his deep meditation and addressed Shari Hotsu, Shariputra. At this time, in the above means the time when the Buddha appears to teach his doctrine because people have acquired the ability to understand it. Meditation is the English for a Buddhist term Sanmai, in Sanskrit, Samadhi, which means to concentrate one's mind on a single subject. The Buddha had been meditating on the principle that all meanings come from the one law. Sherihatsu, whom the Buddha addressed was the wisest disciple of the Buddha and also a man of the two vehicles, learning and realization, or Nijo. The Buddha defined Nijo as, being unable to attain enlightenment being self-satisfied with their own knowledge and failing to seek the Supreme Sutra of the Buddha. Thus, the sentence cited from the sutra should be interpreted thus, the time has come when the Buddha propounds the great principle of Ichi Nen Sun Zen, which enables everyone to attain enlightenment as his disciples have been sufficiently educated. Therefore, Shakyamuni Buddha arose with recollection and consciousness from his deep meditation that all meanings come from the one law, and addressed Sheri Hatsu, who was the representative of the men of the two vehicles and for whom it was difficult to attain enlightenment. From the standpoint of Nichiren Dai Shonin's Buddhism, however, the quoted sutra sentence is interpreted as follows. The time has come when the Buddhism for people in the, the latter day of the law, who are unrelated to Shakyamuni should be expounded. The eternal Buddha, Nichiren Dai Shonin who had been concentrating his mind on the law of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, which Shakyamuni could only suggest as the one law, arose resolutely from his meditation and appeared in this world in Japan which was a land filled with impure-hearted people. Then he addressed those who were devoid of good fortune and opposed the true Buddhism whose its essence is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. He was so compassionate that he allowed even such people to know of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, which is the direct path to attain enlightenment. You may not think that you are Sheri Hatsu to whom the Buddha spoke. Nor do you think you are the wisest in the world. However, the latter day of the law is the time when you can obtain the greatest wisdom through faith in the Gohonzon, as expounded in the Buddhist principle of changing faith into wisdom. In this sense, believers in the Dai Gohonzon may be called Sheri Hatsu. Now you see how the same sentence has different meanings according to the viewpoint one takes. In the practice of Gongyo, you repudiate Shakyamuni's expedient means chapter and read the Dai Shonin's expedient means chapter as your secondary practice, although the sentences are exactly the same. Thus you read the expedient means chapter aloud by yourselves and at the same time listen to it with your own ears, but from the viewpoint of Buddhism, you are listening to the Dai Shonin's lecture on the Lotus Sutra, or, the Angi Kudan. You should then recite the expedient means chapter, keeping in mind that all philosophies other than Buddhism, Hinayana and provisional Mahayana, all the Mahayana teachings, except the Lotus Sutra and even the Shakuman of the Lotus Sutra are inferior to the expedient means chapter as interpreted by Nichiren Dai Shonen and therefore should be discarded. This is the very spirit of Shaku Buku. At the same time, you exalt the wonderful law of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and are convinced of its supremacy. All the sentences of the expedient means chapter have two different meanings but in this book, only the interpretation from the viewpoint of the Dai Shonin's Buddhism is elucidated since it is the very thing you should know in doing Gongyo. The literal interpretation is not necessary for your daily practice. 
As you have understood why you recite the expedient means chapter in Gangyo, you can easily discover the purpose of reading the lifespan chapter. It is to repudiate the contents of the chapter and use, not borrow, its sentences. The most remarkable feature of the lifespan chapter is the revelation of the Buddha. Shakyamuni revealed in the chapter that while people thought he had attained enlightenment at the age of 30, under the Bodhi tree in India, actually he had attained it in an immeasurably distant past known as Goyaku Jintango. In the realm of Shakyamuni's Buddhism, this Goyaku Jintango is the era when Shakyamuni attained Buddhahood for the first time. In other words, Shakyamuni's life is not eternal but only Goyaku Jintango is. This is the literal interpretation of the Lotus Sutra, unrelated to the Dai Shanan's Buddhism. From the viewpoint of Nichiren Dai Shanan's Buddhism, the Buddha who had existed since Kuan Ganjo, infinite past or the infinite past of the universe, which has no beginning, told people for the purpose of instruction that he attained enlightenment at the time of Goyaku Jintango. However, this is still superficial and the truth is yet to be disclosed. What Nichiren Dai Shonen defined as, the lifespan chapter in the eye of my secret conviction, is the very lifespan chapter which in itself elucidates the true aspect of the Dai Shonen. In this sense, true Nichiren Shoshu believers use the lifespan chapter while repudiating even the superficial interpretation of the chapter in the light of the Dai Shonen's Buddhism. The reality of the Dai Shonen is that he has been the true Buddha, eternal Buddha since Kuan Ganjo, when there was no other teaching but only Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. This is the very law, which implanted in the hearts of all people, leads them to Buddhahood. The Buddha who sowed the seeds of enlightenment was Nichiren Dai Shonen who is also called the Buddha of Musa Sanjin. Therefore, there is no other way but to believe in this Buddha and chant, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. This is what the lifespan chapter reveals between its lines when it is used by Nichiren Dai Shonen. The first verse of the Jiga Gay the Sutra in the verse section beginning with Jigataku Bur Rai will be interpreted hereunder according to the aforementioned three points of view. When literally interpreted, the verse Jigataku Bur Rai means, since I, Shakyamuni, attained enlightenment prior to any other Buddha at Goyaku Jintango. This interpretation was completed by Tiantai the Great who spread Shakyamuni's Lotus Sutra with his most perfect interpretation for people in the middle day of the law. Such an interpretation, however, cannot benefit those who live today in the latter day of the law when Shakyamuni's Lotus Sutra itself has lost the power of salvation. From the viewpoint of the Dai Shanan's Buddhism, the same verse reads, since I appeared at Goyaku Jintango, for the purpose of redeeming those who followed me when I attained enlightenment at Kuan Ganjo. However, when the verse is interpreted completely as the Dai Shanan's lifespan chapter, its meaning is far more profound and philosophical. Ga, of, Ji Ga Toku Bur Rai, means Hoshin, Buddha's life Butsu, means, Hoshin, Buddha's wisdom, and Rai means O Jin, Buddha's body. These three phases of the life of Nichiren Dai Shonen acquired by himself. Thus, Ji Toku means to acquire by oneself. The Dai Shonen obtained all of these at Kuan Ganjo, infinite past, or in other words, the Dai Shonen has been the true Buddha, eternal Buddha since the infinite past. This is the true interpretation of Ji Ga Toku Bur Rai. In the recitation of Gongyo, true Nichiren Shoshu believers repudiate the superficial meaning of the sutra and use this interpretation, praising the eternal Buddha, Nichiren Dai Shonen. Obviously, the cited verse, when used by the Dai Shonen, expounds the reality of ordinary people as well as the Buddha. Now I will give you some brief account of Kuan Ganjo, the infinite past which is one of the most profound principles of Buddhism. In the realm of Shakyamuni's Buddhism, Kuan Ganjo, infinite past is indicative of an unimaginably distant past, 
But according to the Dai Shonen, it is with us today or in other words, the present moment is Kuan Ganjo. Kuan Ganjo, infinite past, is the beginning of the latter day of the law when the eternal Buddha who sows the seeds of Buddhahood in the minds of all people makes his advent. The latter day of the law is the day when there are innumerable heretical teachings and the true teaching is buried in oblivion. For this reason, the latter day of the law is very close to Kuan Ganjo, infinite past when there was no teaching, leaving the law of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo as unrevealed. It is at this juncture that Buddhist philosophy becomes a practical teaching. It is no longer a mere theory or a mere idea. The profound Buddhist philosophy accords with reality. It was explained that the verse, Jiga Toku Bur Rai, clarified the essential nature of ordinary people. This life endowed with the three phases of life, Sanjin, is what we have obtained by ourselves. We can never learn Buddhahood from others. You may study Buddhism or hear lectures on the Lotus Sutra and ask someone to teach you what Buddhahood is like, without getting a definite answer. You can do nothing but realize it by yourself. I have obtained these three phases of life by myself. This is how Buddha feels. As for the way to attain Buddhahood, Nichiren Dai Shonen taught us that to chant Daimoku to the Gohonzon is the only way to realize the life of Sanjin. This is the correct meaning of Jiga Toku Bur Rai. As is obvious from the above, you cannot attain enlightenment or Buddhahood by yourself without the Dai Gohonzon and Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, but you must believe in the Gohonzon and chant Daimoku. Without the Dai Shonen, you can never realize the three phases of life which are inherent in everyone, latent but undeveloped. Only through the practice of Daimoku based on faith in the Dai Gohonzon, can you draw these three from within yourself. If you misunderstand this point, you will stray from the true path of life, and will be unable to attain enlightenment. Now it is obvious why Nichiren Dai Shonen repudiates and borrows sentences from the Expedient Means chapter, and repudiates and uses those from the Lifespan chapter. Here is an explanation for why true Nichiren Shoshu believers recite only the Expedient Means and Lifespan chapters among the 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra and why they do not recite the other chapters. This is because the Expedient Means chapter is the most important among the 14 chapters of the Shakuman, the first half of the Lotus Sutra and the Lifespan chapter is the core of the 14 chapters of Hunman, the last half of the same sutra, both revealing the law of Ichi Nen Sun Zen in their own respective ways. All the other chapters are introductory or application of these two main chapters. The expedient means and lifespan chapters are comparable to the trunk of a tree and the remainder to its branches. Nichiren Dai Shonen stated to the following effect. If you believe only in the Dai Gohonzon with pure faith and without the least feeling for any philosophy other than Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism or the least sense of disobedience, and chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo in earnest, then even ordinary people are Buddhas. This is obviously the only supreme enlightenment in this vast universe. Such enlightenment is known as Soku Shinjo Butsu. He also taught. At the very moment of practicing Gongyo, the Dai Shonen's wisdom illuminates us and our wisdom functions in relation with the Dai Shonen's life of the Buddha, both becoming one. At this moment, the Buddha and common people are not different but are one in the reality of eternal life. This is but a moment of enlightenment which is included in the teaching of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Bearing these words of the Dai Shonen deep in their hearts, all true Nichiren Shoshu believers should do Gongyo and chant Dai Moku devotedly every morning and evening. It is with this effort that they can attain Buddhahood and enlightenment. They should keep their habit of Gongyo throughout life with the resolution that, as a verse from the Lifespan chapter reads, in heartfelt desire to see the Buddha, in their lives, they do not begrudge, Ishin Yo Ken Butsu Fuji Shaku Shin Mio. Resolution.
Resolution that, as a verse from the Lifespan chapter reads, in heartfelt desire to see the Buddha, in their lives, they do not begrudge, Ishin Yoken Butsu Fuji Shaku Shin Mio. Section F. 